You guys know who this is. Sean, the detail guy. What's up, guys? So, he ceramic coated the truck, polished it, looks fantastic, but I did the smoke on the headlights. You're gonna laugh at me. I put some eBay taillights in it, but they look pretty good. They look good, right? Did you look at them? Yeah, they look good. Okay. They got the black smoke I mean, effect, which I like. 20 years ago, eBay taillights, you'd cringe. <laughs> you know, nowadays I it's- I tell you, the quality <laughs> is, the, yeah, I mean, I pressed away. I just washed it before you got here, hence, I mean, I didn't try and break them, but I mean, I washed them hard through here just to see if they would fog up. They don't, they don't let in any water. This lights up nice, but my biggest thing was this on the brake light is really distinctive. I put LED bulbs in those stock lights and it was hard to tell between the tail light and the brake. So the tail lights were so bright when you hit the brakes, gotcha. it was like, eh, you can kind of see the brakes are on. But I figured if we can ceramic coat these and the smoked headlights, it'll probably last longer. Yeah, for sure. You could tell I washed the truck and then when I was hitting it with a blower, the water was just blasting off here and then here it would just kind of sheet kind of move Stuck yeah there. i should have filmed it but i was such a rush to try and wash it before you got here not anymore <laughs> but yeah i mean people that are still on the fence for ceramic there's a reason why i do it to every uh, every single vehicle and so many people do it it really is worth it so i won't let sean do his thing i'm not going to film his secrets because there is a trick to this that was quick so that will make all the difference it's it's automotive finish that's on here it's clear with a little bit of black so by protecting it it's going to keep it cleaner and last longer. So, Sean, thank you again. You're welcome, Jack. You want to plug your Facebook? Because yeah, so I keep can... trying to send people your way. <laughs> so you guys can check me out, facebook.com slash monarchautodetailing. Uh, go there, send me a message, DM, like the pictures, helps me out. Absolutely. And, uh, if you guys have questions, ask away. Ask away. He knows what he's doing. He's done all my vehicles. He's done probably the last four vehicles. I call him back all the time. He's going to do a good job for you. Awesome. Thanks again, buddy. You're welcome. I'll see you next time. All right, so ongoing continuation of the truck series. This here is going to be part of the truck series. If you see this right here, you know, do you what we're doing? What do you think? Okay, so you probably figured it out. I'm going to do a V8 in the in the truck. So the engine I found is a 5.3 out of a 2020 Silverado. It has 32 miles. It was a takeout motor. The engine has a six-speed transmission which is what i wanted a lot of the trucks out unless it's a four-wheel drive apparently they all have the eight-speed transmission which sucks everyone has problems with it the colorado has an eight-speed in it uh, apparently the 17s and 18s had a bunch of problems the 19s and 20s it's better but it's still not perfect it's it's okay but changing it to the six-speed transmission the 5.3 might do a cam and it might do a little bit i don't want to make it aggressive it is my daily it does need to tow a boat but i want to kind of share with you what is involved to do an engine like this and what parts to get who to get them from and kind of give you an idea of what it's going to cost so it's going to match the truck i want to make everything work catalytic converters all the emissions everything has to work just the way it is right now but of course i have more power the third brake light, I kind of teased it. I didn't really tease it, I just showed you what was going on. We're gonna put the third brake light in and get the wiring ready to put the lights on. And now the bar is on. Of course it's titanium, everyone knows it's titanium. We're promoting that we do titanium, but I wanted a bar and I didn't want to put a ton of weight on the truck for no reason. We're gonna put the third brake light here. We're gonna get the wiring ready for the light so I can run them into the car. But the whole theme of the truck is black and blue, you see that. I don't have anything silver on it, so. I made the decision once the light is installed and we get it right, I'm going to send this out to AB and get it powder coated satin black. So hopefully you guys kind of agree with my idea here. Again, look at the truck. I mean, I'm going for the looks of the truck. I mean, it's cool, it's titanium, but nothing else is silver on the truck. All right, so this is the GM light. It comes in a box like this. They assume that you already have a bar and you're going to bolt it on. Well, we don't. We have a tube, a piece of cardboard here as a template so that should fit in there it made it a little extra tight because obviously when it curves around the bar this dimension might get a little bit larger yeah, is that like, a tube yeah it's a three inch tube this is a piece that we made earlier so yeah it actually grows quite a bit when this does this too all right so let's see how my fpv driving is i'm going to go by the rear view camera only and listen for bangs hopefully i don't hit something i gotta wash that motor 
Okay, I see that one. I got an L82 sitting on my left that's kind of tight and a line sticking out. So the question is, I'm thinking we need to line it straight here. If you're looking out here, it needs to be in the three o'clock position. We don't want it pointing up, we don't want it pointing down, right? So I wanted to point it into the bed on the cargo light. Point it down like here so yeah. the whole bed lights up red. That actually be kind of trick. So the trick is you have to make sure it's dead center. The good news is if it's not dead center, uh, about 2,000 people on YouTube will tell you that it's not center. That's the good thing of having critics. We just pick the right angle to look like. Yeah, yeah, we'll just trick you. We'll get a ruler and we'll do uh, two different sizes. That way that the, uh, the uh, followers um, are happy. But you guys know we're gonna measure two or three different places. Probably what we'll do is we'll measure between the welds here because this should be center. We'll line up with the center of the tail light. We'll line up with the bed. Of course, it's an American truck, so it's a half an inch to an inch off one way or another. We know that. Thanks for pointing out. It is an American truck and it's made in feet and inches and sometimes yards. But, you know, we'll just line it up with a rear view mirror. That should be close. That, right? So after measuring four or five different directions, we even took a big jan on the strip of aluminum and lined it up with the antenna down the center of our bar all the way across the hood down the front bumper and out to the parking lot and it's in the middle at the back right there it's in the middle at the front so i'll sign off for that george this has been a hot week if anything this is probably the most deserving that we're having these now it's not three o'clock it's later than that but it's three o'clock somewhere yeah, right. It's five o'clock somewhere too. Well, they're not alcoholic. It's they're actually, they're quite healthy. It's four thirty here. Is it? Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, it's not bad. Hour and a half after uh, behind schedule. So I saw our customers. <laughs> Although we just found out, we can't blame this on everybody. Google did say that we open at ten. No oh. idea why. I made a vlog about that, George. Did you? Yeah. I haven't seen that one yet, or? Go watch it. I saw the vlogs. Have you not posted that one yet? Or did you post the last one? It may be in the can it or up be. and I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. That looks just exactly like factory, doesn't it? Yeah. Look at the carpenter. It's almost like we planned it. Now that. All right, so this is the motor I showed you in the video. It just got dropped off a couple of days ago. It is a 2020 motor out of a Silverado. It is out of a 4x4. It's the only way I could get the six-speed transmission. That was something that was important to me. So a few changes have to be made. I'll show you the part numbers, but we need to get a new tail shaft and a new housing here. So basically, this has to be taken apart. We need to change this guy and change this guy so it has a regular tail shaft so we can uh, attach it to the drive shaft from the Colorado. It might need adjusting, uh, lengthening, shortening, something like that. The wiring harness has to be changed. We started taking the wiring harness off right here. I see we have a whole bunch of leaves. It's apparently fall in Florida. It kicked in all of a sudden, so now we have leaves and now they're coming in the shop from yesterday. But the accessories are all included. This motor has 32 miles on it, so it couldn't get much newer than that. It is a takeout motor. Everything looks perfect on it. All the lines are here, harnesses here, uh, computer, uh, c uh, the transmission controller. Few things that are gonna have to be changed. Uh, wiring, harness, I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, we're gonna have to make some custom AC lines. Radiator hoses are gonna have to be kind of moved around. The uh, designation is an L82. It's the 2020 Silverado, like I said. It makes a little bit more horsepower than mine in stock form, but it makes about 100 foot-pounds of torque more, and of course it's gonna make a lot more power load down, which not only is that fun to drive, uh, towing or pulling the boat, anything like that, it's gonna be an improvement for that. Plus the transmission is night and day better. It's very similar to the transmission I had in the Silverado, which was a much better shift in transmission than the eight-speed that's in the Colorado right now. Now, I don't want to rag on the Colorado because the transmission is actually pretty good. I've heard horror stories from the earlier ones. 
This one, there's only certain times where it feels a little weird. If you drive it 30% throttle, it shifts nice and firm, very quick, really precise. But if you're very, very light throttle, it almost feels like it doesn't know what gear to be in. It almost feels like the torque converted locks and unlocks. It's kind of, it almost feels like it doesn't really know what to do. It's not horrible, but it's just a little weird. This is a much better trance. I'm debating whether to do a little bit to it while it's here. It is going to be, be the daily truck. I don't want it to be tuned or modified too much, but I'm considering doing the DOD delete. If you know what that is, just, you know what I'm talking about. To do that, you got to change the camshaft and then at that point, uh, you know, you may as well do springs and retainers and then before you know it, you're doing headers and then, you know, you got another 500 horsepower V8 on your hands. Doing a V8 swap in an S10 in a Colorado, if you know anything about the backstory of these motors and that particular platform, there is one name comes to mind and that's current performance wiring. I'm looking in two ways. One, they're in Holiday, Florida, which is less than 100 miles down the road. And two, the owner, Jared, happens to be a really good friend of mine. How about that? All right, I've got Jared on the phone here from Current Performance Wiring. I'm gonna to talk to him real quick about what I need to complete the swap. So I've already talked to you about the motor. I was asking you before I buy it, can I do it? What do I need to put that motor in? Yeah, I mean, to set the motor in place, uh, engine mounts, least they're gonna set it down in there uh, you'll reuse the factory frame mounts from the truck so all we would be supplying is the brackets basically that bolt to the engine and then set down on top of the existing frame mounts okay uh, the full-size manifolds should fit clear just fine so you should be okay there okay and we already talked about it my radiator on the second gen Colorado is actually quite efficient you were saying so I should be able to reuse that for what I'm doing yeah, I mean, my truck, I had a 2015 you know, that you helped me with with the turbo. Um, that was a factory radiator and fan and that thing. I never had an issue with it overheating at all. We've done a few of these trucks now. Uh, the ZR2 with the uh, Super Trail, the LT4 in it, didn't have any issues cooling that thing. Okay, good. So that, for, for people looking at doing this, I'm trying to document what they're going to need so that they can kind of have a plan. So obviously engine mounts now obviously you're known for your wiring harnesses do you have a wiring harness that will make this work yeah yeah we've got uh the harnesses to work on any of the 15 up colorados it really just comes down to the combination of what engine and transmission and what computer is being used and all that kind of good stuff and we can kind of tailor it to the customer's needs so with what you're doing we can definitely put something together for you perfect okay and then from there Radiator hoses, we can make work. Uh, transmission or engine cooler hoses, that's just a case of fabrication. But I'm running a 2020 with a six speed. I think you said if you was to get like an 18, it's all closer to plug and play, right? With the radiator hoses. Isn't it configured slightly um, different? Yeah, some stuff kind of moves around from year to year with uh, radiator hoses, um, you know, luckily, uh, some people benefit, some people might look at it as just like cable throttle versus electronic throttle and how you feel about it, but the newer vehicles just don't have uh, hydraulic power steering, they're electric, so that's less lines you have to worry about making fit or figuring out how to, how to work with, so that's kind of nice. Yeah, okay. Um, but, you know, the basic stuff, heater hoses, radiator hoses, um, it, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Got it, okay. Well, perfect. Well. Go ahead and I'm going to plug it on the screen, but go ahead and plug your site. Obviously, I know what it is. I've known you a long time, so I know what it is, but go ahead and plug it real quick. I'm going to obviously put it on the screen, however you want people to get a hold of you or order this stuff. I mean, currentperformance.com is our website. Uh, we're on Instagram and Facebook as well. Uh, we try to stay pretty active with putting updates and things, mostly on social media. Um, but the website definitely has useful information to contact us and to look at the products that we can offer for these things. Okay. So, last question. We already talked about my ECU, but if somebody was to get like an 18 truck and an 18 motor with an 18 ECU, what do they need to do to program it just to make it run like a stock 
Silverado? Is that something that you can flash? Do they need to go to the dealer and get the key flashed? How, how does that work? They're kind of tricky. Uh, Second-gen Colorados, in fact, even the first-gen Colorados, the starter system is finicky. Uh, when you hit the key, it's actually wired to the body computer. The body computer then sends the communications to the engine computer to look at whether or not it's in park and how to, whether or not it's okay to start the engine. Uh, in the 15 and up, second gen Colorados, we really try to only stick with gen four, gen five engines going into them. And yes, with the electronics involved, being that everything is communicated through the body computer to the engine computer, you have to have someone with a service level GM style tech two MDI module, something like that, who can relearn the body computer to the new engine computer in order for the key to ever actually function. Uh, it's just kind of a necessary evil unless you really do a bunch of stuff to bypass things. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, mine will be a, a hair more complicated because we talked about it. I have the 2020 engine and computer in the 2020 truck, so I guess I'll be contacting HP tuners to do their magic first, right? Yeah, GM with the different year-to-year -year changes. Um, there's the E92 computer, the E92A computer, which is 17 to 18, and then in 19 and up, they changed to the E90 and then they try to make it as complicated as they can year to year for people to get into them. So with your application, that computer has to be mailed out and unlocked and exchanged or whatever uh, in order to be able to get into it and make changes. I'll try and answer questions along the way as I do this swap because I'm pretty sure it's going to be a popular swap on that truck because it's, it's such a good looking truck. I really enjoy it. It just needs a little bit more power, a little bit more power down low. So I think it'll be a, a good swap for that truck. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and the first-gen trucks, I mean, as they get older and show up on car lots and show up with blown-up motors, they're getting more and more popular to do swaps in. The second-gen's kind of the same thing. As they become, you know, they're around longer, they're showing up, they're, people are able to buy 15 to 16 cheaper. Yeah. Uh, it's getting a lot more popular. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Jared, I really appreciate your time. I appreciate your information. I want to go ahead and cut the feed to the camera now. This isn't something I want to offer as a service because I just don't want to do it. <laughs> we'll do it for mine, and then we're going to send you down to uh, current performance, buy all the parts from him. As we get more information, if there's something that they don't know about, I'll share it with him, and hopefully he can make it available. You can buy it right from him. I think this is going to be an amazing swap. So how do I know Jared? I worked with Jared a long time ago. We have done work back and forth. I helped him with a couple of projects. He sent trucks down to us. We've built headers and exhaust. He's put LT4s in uh, different swaps. He did his own turbo. Like I said, we helped him with the turbo parts. We helped him hook that up. He did all the programming and tuning. But as a little tidbit of information, I was actually in Jared's wedding. So that's how close we are. A good friend of mine, but on a professional aspect, I'm still buying the parts from him. I don't want to ask for anything for free. He's in business. I'm in business. Hopefully the video will pay for the swap and you guys will enjoy it. So don't forget, subscribe, hit the like, give us a thumbs up. We'll see you in the next video. And don't forget, enjoy your trucks.